Tonight, shocking new information in the death of 16 year old Preston Lord. Thanks for joining us. I'm Mark Curtis and I'm Kariba Devine. The 12 News I team has obtained Queen Creek Police's report and 911 calls from the night that Preston was attacked. 12 News journalist Bianca Bono is joining us live in studio and Bianca, what do the records tell us about the murder investigation? Well, guys, there was just so much to go through, but right now we're seeing how officers put their case together from the night of the attack. They went through body camera footage, surveillance video, texts, Snapchat posts and more to learn what happened that night and who was responsible. The call started coming at 9 p.m. So there's a big party going on in my neighborhood with a bunch of teenage kids up and down the street and they're getting high and different things are going on. And they kept coming. There has got to be at least 250 kids here. They're walking the streets. We're not used to this. I'm not used to this in my neighborhood from being here 25 years. It's the night of October 28th, a Halloween party in Queen Creek with 100 to 200 kids. There's too many cars. These kids are going to hit each other. Someone's going to get hurt. Someone's going to okay, get killed. Really By 9.50. Been out, he's been un unconscious for like two minutes. I, I, we need people over here. 16-year-old Preston Lord had been attacked by a group outside the party and would die from his injuries two days later. In early March, nearly five months later, seven suspects were charged with first-degree murder. But a Queen Creek police report newly obtained by the 12 News I team detailing the investigation that led police to their arrests. After hundreds of interviews starting the night of the attack and after going from high school to high school to talk to students, police zeroed in on their suspects, saying, this is what happened at the party. First, in the backyard, someone started videotaping a verbal argument when suspect Treston Billy demanded he delete the video. The person recording and his friends, including Preston, left the party and police say Billy and his group followed them out. Police say suspect Dominic Turner then snatched a chain off of someone's neck and suspect Jacob Meisner strikes someone in the face, calling that the first punch thrown, prompting the groups to run. Then, some attacked Preston. Police executing search warrants for some of the suspect's cell phones and DNA within two weeks after the party. And the messages they uncovered were damning. Suspect Taylor Sherman's messages from October 28th show he receives a message asking who hit him. And he responds, D Money, Jake, Talon and me later saying Talon killed someone with his hands and on October 31st sends a message saying trustee or Talon might be getting charged with murder. And guys, this is just a small portion of what's in these records. We've made it through hundreds of pages, but there's still so much more to process. So we'll be continuing to do that tonight and of course into tomorrow, but so much to unpack here. It seems like based on the reporting and based on the report that they were able to zero in on these suspects pretty quickly. Almost immediately. And so many factors, right? I mean, I think one of the biggest pieces that I found to be surprising was how much information these suspects actually put into their own Snapchat messages, text messages. Quite frankly, that night after the attack, according to these records, they were talking exactly play by play about what happened, yeah. naming their friends, naming other suspects. They later talked about deleting these messages and making sure there was no evidence available on their phones. But once it's out there, it's out there. Yeah. And police very quickly got search warrants for their phones, for their Facebook profiles, their social media profiles, and were able to obtain all of that information. Wow. Well, another interesting thing you found in the report is Queen Creek Police, they weren't initially recommending first degree murder charges, right? That's right. As of mid-December, we actually found that Queen Creek Police were ready to recommend uh, charges to the county attorney's office, but they were looking at second-degree murder and aggravated assault, and they actually didn't have all seven suspects named by mid-December, mm. but obviously they gathered so much evidence, hundreds of interviews, and I should note one thing that was really striking about this was just seeing the brave teenagers, these are young kids, yeah. that found the courage to come forward and do the right thing and talk to police, share videos, private Snapchat messages mm -hmm. when they were frankly really scared of retaliation. Wow. And I don't blame them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, you're still still hard at work. There's 1,100 pages yes. right, of this report that you guys are still digging through. All right, Bianca, thank you so much.
In Gilbert tonight, dozens of people gathered to show their support for Preston Lord's family and continue their push for justice. The group gathered at Gilbert City Hall and walked around the area. After the walk, Preston Lord's stepmother read a statement written by Preston's mother. We were each other's biggest cheerleaders and you had the best listening ear about my life goals. That is what I miss the most. You had a gift to help guide and listen to people. And as I have heard from many of your friends, parents, you did this for them as well. Others in attendance spoke about the strength of the Lord family and the tremendous ability of the community to come together and push for justice. We have continuing coverage of the Preston Lord murder case, both on air and online. As always, stay with 12news.com and the 12 News app for the very latest.